with Hannah Witten. Oh Hello. my gosh, I I just hopped in it. Yeah. Kind of eight. Have you ever done ASMR? Hey guys, hey what's guys. up? Welcome, welcome to the Creative Exchange. Exactly. I had to do that in an American accent. I don't know why. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Uh. Okay, you want to hear my British accent? <laughs> All right. Hi guys, well, <laughs> welcome no, it, to the Creative Exchange. It's not just a British accent, it's a British vlogger. Like, <laughs> sup What's, guys. Sup, why, girl, oh. Honestly, I think we should stop that. I'm, yeah, I'm so bad with accents. I, uh, Sorrel, yeah, have you met her? No. Uh, Sorrel, the more. Oh, so, she's Australian, right? Yeah, yeah, but I did not even know that that was an Australian accent. I thought uh. it was like a cross between a British and like something else. So I'm you're, terrible you're Texan. I'm Texan. I lived in Texas when I was a kid for one year in Austin. Why? And I, I, so I was four years old and um, my dad got a job at UT for a year. University of Texas, Austin. Yeah. My dad went there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so my dad's a professor and he got a fellowship for a year. And yeah, we, the whole family went out and I was there between the age of four and five and I had a full-blown Texan accent as a kid. Okay, do your best Texan accent. I'm putting you on the spot. Oh, oh my putting God. So say, let's let's go get some queso at a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh. No, I have to be like... Um, Hey Sarah, let's go get some queso from 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 this Mexican joint. That's good, know. but That's it was good. like a strong. I know because sometimes I then go into like. Valley girl, you know, yeah. that's like the other. No, that's, that's like I'm from Texas, Te Texas, Texas. How and I had like a strong Texan accent when I was like five years old. Oh my god! No, no, that's I like bet you were so cute. <laughs> oh my god! But then my, they, my dad got offered like another year, and my parents were like, "We're not going to take it because we don't want our kids to be American." <laughs> <laughs> so then we went back to the wow. UK and, I, and then I sound like this again okay anyway this you is complete what? tangent no I love it though because honestly I think we can we can go into this but <laughs> I think growing up in Texas um it was a beautiful bubble to grow up in mm. however I think it is important at some point in life to get beyond what you grew up in and understand how different people live their life yeah. and just like it. Even that's if that's how just you, to go, that's cool, but I liked it here. So exactly, I'm gonna it. exactly. <laughs> and you know, that's you can travel, you can just meet up with friends across the world. I mean, that's when uh, the first time I ever went to New York my senior year of high school, it blew my mind. And I was like, first time what? I went to New York, yeah, you were about 17. Yeah, I was 17 first yeah. time I went to New York and was like, oh my God. I know, it's insane. Nothing's like it. And mm -hmm. once I started realizing, like, oh my gosh, like the different way. And you're on the subway and you're on the subway with a, a person who works at Chipotle and then a billionaire CEO. And it's like, <laughs> it's so crazy. I feel like there's just so many different types of people there. Um, but where do you live? What do you do? Who are you, Hannah Witten? Yeah, so I'm not, not a, a Texan. Few years. You're yeah, not a Texan. Not a Texan. Um, so I live in London, UK. And I'm a YouTuber. I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> Sarah's just got up, and so only the patrons are going to see her just like crawling around the hotel room. Getting water. Um, yeah. Water. 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 <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm an online content creator. I talk a lot about taboo subjects. I like talking about sex and relationships. Um, I had a lot of health stuff this year. I had to have surgery, and I've talked a lot about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why people love you and love your channel so much is you keep it real. Yeah. And I think you talk about things that, you know, people and maybe even specifically young girls like want to know about, but it's kind of weird to talk about. So it's it's cool to have a a YouTuber just be so chill about it. And so chill. Yeah. And I don't mind talking about these things. About it. You exactly. can ask me all the questions. Yeah. And you have a book i do have a book it's called doing it doing it and it actually just came out in the u.s this year oh my gosh guys yeah so there's lincoln a u.s bio, edition or lincoln show notes so what's mm. different so the cover is different and it's been americanized so american spellings um you know so what was that meeting like that was basically like, okay guys we're releasing this in the u.s does the cover need to be more coverful more like crazy yeah so i i'm not massively involved in that i basically just wrote the book, it got published mm -hmm. in the UK, was very heavily involved in that whole process. Yeah. And then once like the rights get um, bought by different publishers in different countries, I kind of 
really don't have a lot to do with that. I get to like have a say in the cover. Like they send me like, like with the US one, they sent one over at first and I was like, mm, it's not quite working. And then they like, and I sent over some notes and then yeah. they sent a new I'm one. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. by the book process. Yeah. I, it's so slow. And when, you, really, when you think about- When did it start? When, when were you like, I want to make a book? Well, it was a publisher that reached out to me, which is, you know, because of the position that I'm in on YouTube, definitely yeah. came around because of that. I swear um, YouTubers yeah. sell the most books, probably, of like <laughs> anyone, unless it's like Twilight or something. But I think it's really cool that YouTube is like re reviving this medium yeah. that isn't like super hip to the young kids. <laughs> I and also there's booktube as mm -hmm. well so there's like a whole that's very true a whole subsection of youtube where people talk about books and I'm kind of like I dip my toe in booktube and I talk about books a lot in terms of like in my favorites videos or mm -hmm. and I have a whole podcast about books as well books and sex I so know. it's called banging book club we talk we read, we read books about sex and then we talk about it I had no <laughs> yeah. idea that that you're busy. I am busy. And yeah, so I've always loved books. Yeah. And then a publisher was like, would you like to write a, like a sex and relationships advice book for young people? And in my head, like it's the, you know, it's like the imposter syndrome talking. Mm -hmm. I was like, I knew that I wanted to write a book, like a sex ed book, but I was like, it will have to be in 10 years time once mm -hmm. I like, I have, have to have more experience. I've got the experience and I've got the PhD, or, you mm -hmm. know, whatever it is. But then here were these people going like, no, like you, we're giving you permission to write this now. And like, and sometimes you need someone else to give you that permission, 100%. Um, which is kind of frustrating. But mm -hmm. yeah, they were like, do you wanna write this book? And I was like, oh my goodness, yes. So then worked with them on like figuring out the topics the and the structure and the tone and, and what we wanted to do with it. And then once like I literally had the structure and the light and everything, I just sat and I wrote it and it took just two and a half months. I was like, blah, 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 blah. Wow. and I wrote the whole thing in two and a half months. And then, uh, that's crazy. Yeah. And then there's another like, when, when did I, ha I handed in the draft. Oh, like at the end of September. And then it came out at the beginning of April. Hmm. So that's yeah. actually pretty impressive. Cause I've had friends who it seems like writing a book seems like just the end of times where yeah. they'll be writing a chapter for a month instead of half of a book, you know? I feel like so. fiction and nonfiction, well, they're, they're different to me. And also mm -hmm. with this book, it was like, this is all of the knowledge that I've accumulated over the last five years. Right. And this is just me brain dumping yes. everything. And so now, now I'm like, ooh, now the well is empty. Mm -hmm. Now I need to refill the well. I Do love it. I, mean? I love it. What do your parents think of everything? They're so proud. That's awesome. Yeah. So your dad's no. a professor, and then what's your mom do? She works um, for like a city council. She's okay. a welfare rights manager. Cool. Yeah, she she deals with Ooh, a so lot your of. Your parents are smart. Yeah, yeah, they're smart and they're kind. That's and they're amazing. Super supportive. Yeah. So little Hannah Witten, maybe eighteen years old. I want to be a YouTuber, or I want to get a video camera. What what do they yeah. what do they say? So I just I I don't think I like said that to them I think yeah. I just did it yeah. and then like told them that I had this hobby like after I started um but I don't I don't know I think I don't think they ever they if they ever did think like oh this is a bit weird they never said it to me at the mm -hmm. beginning um and I wasn't someone who like hid mm -hmm. my videos from like my real life friends I think I like just posted it on my That's like cool. actual Facebook no I profile. love that yeah. um and then, you know, they've just been like super That's supportive cool. the whole way and just, and, and it's really nice the way that they take an interest. Mm -hmm. And your your mum is very involved mm -hmm. in like your business as well. I want business her to come well. work for yeah. me. We're I don't want that prime. with my parents. <laughs> well, I don't I, want that. So with But the... my sister is a graphic designer and she Ooh. has designed some merch for me. Oh, and that's she amazing. is now like, you know, trying to build her Instagram profile mm. um, with her design work and what stuff. Plugger. What's Leah her? Witten. I think her Instagram is Leah.Witten, but follow know, it, guys. There's not many Wittens, W I T T O N. Yeah, yeah. There, that's, so. that's cool when other people in the family are creative. Yeah, Because yeah. I. It's cool because now me and my sister can kind of jam. use each other. Because yes. I need designers sometimes. Of course. And she is trying to like grow her presence. And mm -hmm. so I can just like be like, and that's Go what creative things. relationships are about, using each other. 
That's something I want to ask <laughs> I you about. I have paid her. I have. When, my, when my sister has designed stuff for me, I've paid her. That's good. That's yeah, good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in this world of YouTube, mm-hmm. what do you think about, like, do you think using a people, using a people, using a people, using a people, welcome to the day after Buffalo Festival. Exactly. <laughs> so I talk about this with John all the time. People love to talk about, about just like, oh, that person uses people or using people, blah, blah, blah. My perspective is I love making stuff and mm-hmm. I love that my friends are creators. And so my favorite type of hanging sesh is like sitting here with you for 45 minutes, an hour and like talking, but also making a podcast at the same time, yeah, yeah. you know, but from the outside, I think people could be like, oh, you only like hang out with people when you're making stuff. And I'm like, that's cool to me. I yeah. love that. And that's like your your friendships and that's what right. um, they're built around. I definitely like, I'm not like that, mm. but I, cause you do more like, f- like documenting your life mm. kind of content. Whereas my stuff is just like, I'm gonna sit down and talk to you about this topic mm. kind of thing. And it might be like documenting my life, but I'm not li- literally like camera out all the time. Like I, I have no idea how people do that. Do you I have do a group of friends that are completely, like completely out of this world? <laughs> Out of this world. Out of this, out of this world. So they are I mean, out like, of this world in YouTube. YouTube, but they're also out of this world in terms of how amazing they are. Yes. So <laughs> both. Um, yeah, I have like lots of like pockets of friends from different walks of life. So I've got like a group of my girlfriends who our mums met when they were pregnant with us. So we've known each other our whole lives, 26 oh, years. Oh, that is sick. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they're, you know, like my other family members mm-hmm. basically. And then I've got a whole group of my mates from uni who um, don't do YouTube when I hang out with them. Did you finish college? Yes, I did. Amazing. Where'd you go? University of Birmingham. Where'd you study? History. History. Yeah. So I did YouTube like on the side all the way through uni. And then it was when I graduated that I was like, I'm going to try and make it. I'm moving to London. Um, But yeah, but then I do have my like group of friends. Like most of my friends in London, I would say I've met through YouTube. Right. But like we don't, make stuff together yeah. anymore like or we might like work on the odd project mm-hmm. here and there or like do the odd collab but ultimately now I feel like I just have this group of friends and it just so happens cool. that we met on the internet yeah yeah I think I have four people in New York that are the homies and like we'll go to dinner we'll go to lunch we'll hang mm-hmm. out with you know nothing involving let's talk about the next project or yeah, whatever yeah. Um, and the those people are the homies but my favorite part of doing content i hate that word but really? being yeah I, like it's but i don't i don't take myself seriously enough to <laughs> call call it like films or movies content creator but yeah the best part mm. about that is i think just being creative is a part of like everything which is super yeah. fun but going back to moving to london yes and kind of from an outsider perspective i used to be a huge fan of that scene of like London YouTubers mm. and so which one which group yeah That's I wanna thing. yeah lots of different there's pockets right yeah so pockets, aren't there? I was a huge fan of Jack Scap, Ben Brown fun oh, for Louie yes, yes, that, that, that group and then it expanded to like Adrian and Tim and yes. all those people well Tim's then, a New Yorker yeah, yeah 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 and he's always traveling and stuff mm-hmm. I think he hangs out with Finn a lot um since he moved to New York as well and so for some reason when I was watching them or as a fan, I just thought that was like the ultimate, like, oh my God, they're the biggest thing ever. Mm. They're living like the best creative life. That's so inspiring. <laughs> um, and it was weird to kind of see it just kind of like crumble a little bit, that community they had, Crazy you know, Interesting. from yeah. the outside. Yeah. But did they're you, all doing different things. Yeah. And yeah they're did not- you watch that type of stuff or what type of community were you in? Um, in that London scene. In the London scene, very much my start in terms of like the first community on YouTube that I was involved in would be like Nerdfighteria. Nice. So like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the Vlog Brothers yeah. uh, and and all of the, you know, you know, if you've got the Vlog Brothers in the middle, it's like all of the satellite people yeah. associated with them. And then like, you know, there's a lot, yeah. again, lots of pockets there. So yeah. definitely that, mm-hmm. that crowd. And then, yeah, so either like nerdy, booktube or then like some of the like London filmmakery mm-hmm. people as well. There's 
yeah i'm a big fan of the stuff that comes out from yeah London. it's interesting because it's like you are friends your colleagues your acquaintances like you you have like the the larger social group mm -hmm. um and you might see each other at events and stuff mm -hmm. but then you've got the people like you said that the you homies, actually yeah. reach out to and see on a regular basis and you're not right. documenting but yeah, it's interesting, I think, with YouTube of how a lot of lines can get blurred mm -hmm. between those things. And everyone is so friendly with each other mm -hmm. and not in a fake way. Like everyone, you know, everyone is doing the same thing and enjoying it and yes. enjoying hanging out. Um, but the best way I feel of describing it is like, we're all colleagues, but we just don't see each other. Yeah. We don't have to work in the same office all the time. Exactly. But we are all colleagues. Yeah. Yes. Yes, colleagues. 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 <laughs> I need to visit London again. I've only yes. been twice and every time I'm there, I'm only there for like two or three days. Because you came to Summer City last year? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that was cool. But mm -hmm. I had to leave like right after Summer in the City. Um, so I need to come back and that's hang true. out with everyone. I have a spare room. It makes it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a good segue <laughs> because I want to talk about you being an adult and you just bought a flat. Yeah, I'm a homeowner. What? Oh, drop the mic <laughs> girl tell yeah. me like how has that process been are you officially moved in we're officially moved in we still got lots of boxes mm -hmm. still got so much to do but the the flat is functioning mm -hmm. so everything that we need is that's is good there um yeah it's so exciting it's been such a stress ball mm -hmm. they say that the three most stressful like life experiences are divorce death like like someone else not well your own death might be stressful that would be stressful <laughs> too but like a loved one's death yeah. or like someone that you know um death and moving mm. those are the three mm -hmm. most stressful things in a person's life apparently um and it's a new build so mm. we were told that it would be ready and we'd be able to move in at the end of march and then we moved at the beginning of september wow and it wasn't like in March they told us it's going to be September because then I can be like, plan, okay, it's going to be six months, it fine. Was, uh... It was every week for five months, any day now, any day now, any day now. Did you, were you hopping <gasps> like apartments or how did you handle that? So in the flat that we were living in before, we managed to extend the lease for an extra month or two. Okay. And, but then we had a month where we moved out of London and we lived with my boyfriend's dad. Okay for Fun. a month yeah dan yeah that's the that's the bf yes who is not a youtuber at all what does he yeah what is what does he do does he have just like a he has a job? normal job normal job normal job he goes to wow. an office every day wow. Monday to friday yeah crazy i love it C crazy but it, what it does for me is it like holds me accountable to having a structure in my own life because mm -hmm. as a freelancer like you know you, you could stay up till three wake up at you 10 know, you, you, like, you're only accountable to your own schedule and your own deadlines yeah and often you make up the deadlines whereas like with dan i know that he works these hours and he's going to be home in the evenings and he's going to be free on weekends so I try and make myself mm -hmm. as available as possible mm -hmm. in those times as well. Because that, that's when we hang out. That's cool. Yeah. I was thinking about the other day. Because, and honestly, this is, I also want to talk to you about this of YouTube. And it's always changing. You have to constantly evolve. But mm -hmm. I was talking to John about it. And we were just kind of like doing the what if game. And basically, oh, YouTube, what could we go and do? Like, you know, what... Like, like if, if it like didn't if exist, this, like basically like yeah, yeah. if we lost everything and you, you really never know though, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I mean, Pe channels die a, constantly. Exactly. Like, you, you know, you're just riding the wave and you want to try and future proof yourself as exactly. much as possible, but sometimes it's out of your control. Exactly. And so that's always a conversation with us. And we were just kind of like jamming on like, oh, I could totally see you like making dope videos for Vice or something. Yeah. Um, but then... At the same time, I was like, oh, my God, I would die if you had to leave for the majority of the day. Because a lot of what we do is just, like, sit alone with each other but edit. Yeah, yeah. And we've kind of gotten into that flow. And and so it's – I don't know where I was taking this point. But basically – Like working with your partner. Or, or yeah, yeah. And I think it's it's different for everyone. And I think the fact that we we like being alone, so we like being alone together – 
so that works out well. Um, but I think I would die if I had a regular job or a nine to five. Um, but the fact, okay, this is where I was pivoting. Mm -hmm. It's stressful, right? And like we're our own boss and things are constantly changing. And so it's not for everyone. And, Mm -hmm. and so you started your channel, was it five years ago? Seven years ago. Seven years ago. 2011. Wow. Okay. I posted my first video in 2011, but I didn't get like going. Mm -hmm. Um, So you have obviously seen this platform change. Yeah. And how have you evolved with the changes? Like in the very beginning, were you very open about relationships and sex and your life? And um, like how how have you evolved as so many things have changed? Yeah. It it was within the first year that I started making sex ed content. So that was something that happened quite quickly um, because... I started growing an audience. I was I was like very active in the online community, which I think definitely helped me grow at yeah. the beginning. Cause I would just be doing like collabs or like, you know, even just like internet collabs with people who also had like 50 subscribers or a hundred subscribers. Talk about that. Talk about that hustle. Like, like, would you literally send a clip to someone to put in their video and vice versa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like shit like that or like, um, I've done other collabs where like we're on Skype, we've got each other in our ears and we're both filming into a camera and then you send each other. You cut it. Yeah. Yeah. And then after. you cut the, it together and stuff like that. That's but like when I was first on YouTube, um, like it was a hobby. I, I started doing it because I was watching other vloggers and I was so um, like compelled by the community I was like, they're all friends. This is so cool. I want like friends like that. And I want to be part of a community. And so I just started making, I just started posting videos. And then there was all of the, obviously I was like watching some of the like bigger YouTubers at the time, like the Charlie McDonald's Mm -hmm. and like the vlog brothers and like five awesome girls kind Mm -hmm. of thing. And, but then you start posting and then you start finding people who are doing exactly the same thing as you. Mm And there would be like these huge, um, not Google Hangout, cause that didn't exist yet, but that thing with like 10, 20 people. And there'd be all of us and we were all like different, like small channels. And we'd, I would stay up so late cause a lot of them are American as well. And I would stay up so late. I would just like talk for hours. And it was like this massive group chat. Um, that's so cool. And, and, and even though we like couldn't collab, it would be like shout outs. Yeah. You know, you'd be telling your, 50 subscribers go subscribe to this person they're really cool yeah yeah people forget about those times and forget the it fact was so that so fun the people who have so attention have done that but it was also just fun there was mm-hmm. no pressure there was nothing existed that was like how to be a youtuber this is yeah, you no. know I it didn't was see any of that my videos yeah. are terrible at the beginning i wish i knew but, <laughs> but it started as a community which yeah, yeah. which is so cool and i think just a group for people who are a little different who want to find certain niches yeah yeah the and misfits exactly mm-hmm. and the fact that i mean we're talking about 50 subscribers 100 subscribers and like going outside of your comfort zone and finding other people with similar followings and mm-hmm. like, oh how can we collab and lift each other up and i think immediately people go to i need to email that youtuber with fifty thousand subscribers i only have 100 subscribers but i'm sure this will like you have to have such a crazy yeah. value exchange like you're a phenomenal filmmaker maybe and yeah. you just started your youtube but you weren't going to the charlie mcdonald's of the world in the beginning no no no, no. it was just going to the people who were doing the same thing as me same level and just commenting on the video being yeah. like i really loved this yeah don't know that's it actually there was one guy that i watched who lived in austin and i just commented like i used to live in austin but i'm british and immediately that's like a that's interesting yeah you know and then we became friends totally yeah and i would say the equivalent because youtube was less saturated then so i think it was easier to directly reach out and to get people's attention oh yeah we used um like the there's a youtube's direct, messenger. direct messaging yeah youtube inbox thing which yeah. no one really uses anymore no i don't exist? even know where to find it i think it does i don't know youtube I yeah and I, I don't need it it's fine there exactly. are there are too many other places where people can contact me <laughs> so i would say for me that plug is twitter if yeah. someone wants to contact me, whether they have subscribers or don't have subscribers, yeah. I'm constantly on Twitter. And so I'm constantly checking that. And I think there's a really, if you just block words like Donald Trump, Kanye West, Twitter will be a great experience for you. Yeah. You know? Just jokes. 
Exactly. <laughs> and I think it's a really great place for a creative community. Um, and I, th- I still think it's possible on YouTube to find that community. Just don't put the pressure of being a professional YouTuber. Because I feel like yeah. the people who are doing it now, that's not, that wasn't the first intention. No, but I also don't think there's anything wrong with, like, wanting to be a YouTuber. Yeah. In the same way that, like, we totally validate young people's dreams to be an actor or a mm-hmm. singer or, you know, in, like, other more established mm-hmm. creative industries. And, like, young people growing up now and wanting to be YouTubers. Yeah. I guess you just, just have that. to be clear on your motivation for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I, yeah. I also, like, the making lots of money thing it's like yeah if you do a certain type of content and you're super successful at that Mm -hmm. but most of the time it is just this nightmare of when's the next paycheck coming in yeah it's like usually like big paychecks but sporadically and so you have to budget yourself Mm -hmm. to make sure you can last that long and then there's freaking taxes i i did um i was doing a talk recently at google island Mm -hmm. And it was about like online. Um, it was Google Island? Oh, <laughs> it's in the country island. So it was oh. the Dublin offices. Okay, cool. <laughs> I said like, that to someone the other day and they're like, Google own an island? I, I like, know, I'm like, no. can I get invited? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Google Island. Like, this is the yes, thing. yes. <laughs> oh, oh much like Disney own islands. Yeah. So um, what were you talking about there? Yeah, so there was like a bunch of young people there because it was about like online safety and privacy and like young people. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And they had me there as like the the digital person, the yeah. YouTuber. And there was like a Q&A bit and a young person in the audience was like, when I say young person, I'm kind of like anything under 25, but mm-hmm. th- these people were teenagers. Yeah. Um, well, you're under. I'm you're 26. 20. Okay, I'm 26. I was 24. Um, and oh, yes, yeah, so I'm not counting myself as a young person. <laughs> I'm still a young you're person. You're a young person. I'm like, okay, yeah. girl. <laughs> so these are, um, it was a teenager. And they asked like, what's, what's, they were talking about people wanting to be YouTubers. Mm -hmm. And like, what's one thing that you think that those people should know that they might not know? And I was just like, the admin. Like Mm, the admin, like the emails and the phone calls and the the forms you got to fill out and all the money and the tax and stuff. And like, do you register as self-employed or do you register as a, yeah. um, And all of that. And, and then I was speaking to some of the, the young people afterwards and they were like, oh my God, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but that's the case in most jobs. Mm-hmm. There's there's always this Just, side of most jobs that when you're like younger and you're like, I want to be this, I want to be this. You don't understand. You don't, yeah. You, you, you're never told about mm-hmm. the admin that's involved in that. Exactly. And you know what's so funny is when uh, I watch British YouTubers, <laughs> they call all that stuff admin. What and do you I call it? I don't know what we call it, but that was the first time I've ever heard that. Like like Ben Brown on a vlog would be like, oh, just a little admin day, answering emails and phone calls and stuff. I mean, I guess we just say answering emails and phone calls, but it's, I like that term. Admin, yeah. Like, because. Because you have your administrator. Exactly, exactly. And I think I'm, I'm sorry, I just burped in the mic. (laughs) I'm so disgusting. (laughs) I. I'm really good at burping. You're really good at burping. Can you burp on demand? Uh. Whoa! Like, felt like I, have to move the mic I love far away. that. Oh my gosh, on demand burping. Yeah. I bet you did not expect that when you clicked on a Hannah Witten podcast on the Creative Exchange. I don't know. Someone said to me once, like, can someone please make a montage of all of the burps that Hannah's done in videos? <laughs> like, I really, I'm not going to do that, but I would really love if someone did that. I've, so I've been drinking so much bubbly stuff. Mm. Um, usually I don't drink soda, but like on this trip, I've been drinking just like seltzer water and Coke. And so it's been just Gassy. like, it's been like a constant uh, burping journey. Mm-hmm. But yes, admin. And I, I definitely think, because honestly, a lot of the stuff that I make too is trying to like, educate and inform people on how to make a living as a creative and a creator and that's so exciting and I am so hashtag blessed to be able to do Mm -hmm. that and I want to empower other people to do that um but I guess what I was getting at earlier was just so many people want to be youtubers to make money and so it is good to like raise awareness of it's not just like traveling the world having fun hanging out with pretty people there is that admin side of things that honestly still to this day is something 
that I dread so much, like 592 oh, emails. No, no, you know? no, I can't handle that. Like, I'm inbox zero kind of gal. Oh, yeah. Oh my oh, God. Oh. And see, I even have, you know, I have a manager mm-hmm. who helps me out with stuff, but still, like, there's so. I, it's just so overwhelming and I hate it so much and that's something that I need to figure out. How do you achieve inbox zero? You have to you dedicate the time. This is the thing. Like when, if you've got like an inbox like that, you just have to set aside the time. Like, okay, so for this, this two hour chunk of my day, mm-hmm. I'm doing my emails. Do you do Unsubscribe email? Unsubscribe from all email lists. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if you're listening to the audio version of this, you can watch the video version at patreon.com slash mm-hmm. I basically just flash my inbox at like 600 emails and so I'm the type of person that has to do it in waves and I think that's what I have to be more intentional with is I have to it treat wave, it like an every... more wave comes in I know and it's so bad yeah. so you do it every single day yes but so I used to be like at the other end of the spectrum mm-hmm. that is also really unhealthy and yeah. bad which is that I would have my email tab open constantly so any and you would just so, react yeah which so, is dangerous yes exactly because anytime there's like a one like unread mm-hmm. thing i would stop what i was doing and then go and deal which with that email. good for creative types exactly because you need, you need chunks of time you need to that work. deep focus and seeing those notifications just takes you out of mm-hmm. that especially if i'm like writing or if i'm editing or like yeah. whatever it is i'm doing and so that was not helpful for me and it took talking to um just other creative friends and like figuring out how they do yeah. emails that I my system now is that like I'll do like an hour on my emails in the morning mm-hmm. and then I'm like done done and then I'll check it just before the day ends like four or so five you come back to it just to kind of like see if there's anything that I need to do that day mm-hmm. um and then if not, then uh, and then I'll just like check it on my phone just before I go to bed in case there's anything urgent, just so I have that in my head. Yeah. And then the next day, I do this. I just like that's smart. Do you have? Are you a routine person? Do you have? Yeah. So you're like email Structure breakfast. Yeah. So I mean, what is your day in the life, of Hannah Witten? Oh, so I don't have that much of a structured mm-hmm. routine. I enjoy like my little bits of structure yeah. within because like it's still freelance, so it's exactly. still just like. No day is the same, yeah. um, but those I, little routines. The I little guess. routines are, I like, I like to like catch up on YouTube videos whilst I eat my breakfast. Mm-hmm. That's like a, a little thing, yeah. like to see what's going on. And then I'll do emails is usually one of the first things I do in the day. I don't know if I want that to be the case. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of like maybe I do like a create like a write a blog post first thing, and, right. and then like emails a second. I'm not sure. Um, but then I have like my calendar and my to-do list, which is like that that is, that is my life. That tells me what I'm doing every day. Do you use day. any special apps or are you a physical writer for a to-do list? So I've com- recently completely digitized all of my note taking. Oh my gosh, so I me. have the new iPad with the Apple Pencil and I have the app GoodNotes. Mm. So it's like you can have lots of different notebooks in it. So I have like um, a whole notebook that is for um just notes and ideas and then there's a whole notebook that is like for meetings mm-hmm. um and they're just all digital and you can like scribble you can like take pictures of things and add them in there you can like highlight yeah. stuff and it's searchable as well so That's you nice. can like search your own handwriting so i still get that like pleasure That's of, cool. Yeah, so i can still i still get that pleasure of like like writing yeah. it because that feels like it's going like from brain to, to soul yes, to hand yeah the whole process. Like, yeah, but then um, when I'm out and about, if I'm not if I'm not editing that day, I don't need my laptop with me. And you just bring your iPad. So I just bring my iPad, mm-hmm. and it means I'm not also bringing a notepad. Yeah. And it's just like too much stuff That's to cool. carry around. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I'm really liking nice. that system. That's a good flow at the moment. That's good. I need yeah. to. Uh, but everything's digital, like my calendar. Yeah. And everything. That's yeah. good. That's good. I still have to. Um, so I just use simple moleskin notebooks I still mm. have to physically put a pen to paper when I'm like brainstorming video stuff like if I have an idea yeah and I'm just like writing it out so I get satisfied yeah. now just just from up the apple pencil yeah. on screen I have like that, 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 Maybe I that should. like scratches that itch for me mm. like in a way that is also going to mm. serve me in terms of productivity right right changing gears yeah this past year, you had to have stoma surgery. Yes. And you went through something that, like, 
it it was really inspiring me inspiring for me to see you from the outside like go through all that and still be making videos Mm -hmm. and still have um you know because first of all what is that sure (laughs) two just so you know if you're comfortable sharing because uh you did share a lot of the journey Mm -hmm. and like two you're amazing the fact that you like were sharing the whole process and being open about it and sharing along with your audience is amazing because if I had to go through anything of that degree, I feel like I would just like shrink inside myself and hide in a corner. Yeah. So you're amazing. But what is that and what was that journey like? Because Yeah. So I have ulcerative colitis, which is a form of inflammatory bowel disease. And I was just diagnosed when I was seven and had a bunch of flare ups. Um, you know, every every couple of years, and then I would have nothing and just be mm. on meds. Um, and then I had a 10 year remission. But my last flare up was when I was 15, mm. nothing for 10 years, just on medication. And then last, like November, December was when I like started to get a few symptoms, started mm. to feel a bit ill and it just escalated. And mm. I just had the worst flare up of my life, was in hospital for a month mm. and I had to have emergency surgery to remove my colon and I now have a stoma bag. And then five months later, I had more compli- like had complications and had to have open surgery again. But yeah, so it's been a year. And like, so it was, it's that, but then like, I'm still in recovery now. Like yeah. it's like, it's just such a process and, and the recovery, like the whole thing was so hard. Like I was like a shell of a person mm-hmm. during the time when I was like the illest. Um, and then after the diseased part of me was removed, it was like, I just like was born again. I was wow. like, oh my God, I don't feel ill anymore. I feel amazing. Yes, I'm in a fuck ton of pain because someone just <laughs> sliced through my stomach. Yeah. Um, but um, I was like, oh, I'm not ill anymore. This yeah. is amazing. But the physical recovery and the mental recovery from, I can only from that has been the focal point of my year. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of like work stuff that I've had to put off and, um, Honestly, and, when I when I first yeah. saw that you're going through that, and then you just kept putting out stuff, and I was like, Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that videos was the least I could do. Yeah. And it was when I got back home from hospital, when I was finally feeling like strong again. I was just like, I emails is scaring me. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, I, it wasn't. The first thing I did when I got home was like, I'm gonna do my email. Cause I had put like an out of office somewhere else I was in hospital. <laughs> I was like, I'm not available right now. You know, what's, you know what's so funny is you being in the hospital for one month not answering emails is like the same for me for a regular. Of me. Like, <laughs> like I should be setting out of office emails for a month just for everyone who e- emails me. That's why it's so I terrible. Love using out of so, um, but yeah, and then I got back and you know, I was, I couldn't think of like doing any big projects. I couldn't think of like Mm -hmm. going to meetings and talking to people. But what I could do was I knew that I could sit down Mm -hmm. and like film a video and go back to the homies, the audience. Send it to my intern to edit Mm -hmm. and then just relax and upload. And that that was like just so easy Mm -hmm. for me. And it felt good to be doing something, but it was like, minimum like it was minimal effort mm-hmm. from me but I was so weak that like um physically like carrying like the tripod and stuff like down the stairs my boyfriend would get up in the morning for work he would get the tripod and the and and everything and he would and my camera and he would carry it downstairs and put it downstairs so mm-hmm. it was like ready for me so uh-huh. I could just then film because I was like so physically weak that like I couldn't yeah like lift lift oh my god yeah, yeah, yeah well thank god you had people <laughs> around you too yeah, that yeah, cared yeah. for you and like uh what was that like having your audience along the way because i'm sure you were checking comments and like yeah you know, so like i do you know i just didn't do anything for the month i was in hospital i yeah. was just like no videos like mm-hmm. like the odd tweet just to be like still in hospital mm-hmm. just had surgery like that was it um and i didn't want to look at my phone yeah and so that's why it was so exciting getting home and just being like, oh my God, I want to be on social mm-hmm. media. Like it's exciting. Um, and I just knew that I wanted to share. I, I just knew that the, the first video that I made after like a month away had to be like, this is what's happened. Yeah. Um, and the response was so supportive, right? Yeah, because yeah. well, I was terrified. I was like, I've not made videos in a month. Right. The algorithm's going to screw me over. And mm-hmm. um, this is the beginning of the end of my career. But turns out super people are super curious mm-hmm. about those terrible things. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Um, but I just knew that 
I had a great opportunity here in terms of I already have an audience, I have a platform. And like you said, you know, you like, I would have shrunk in a hole and, and you know, never talked to people and been super terrified or whatever. That is a lot of people's experiences, especially mm-hmm. with having stoma surgery, because it's about poo. Yeah. It's like you have a bag well, of poo attached to you. And I, I had never heard of it before you. Yeah. And so right. that's why I think with those things and why YouTube is so great or just however you share online is whatever it is, you're raising awareness and you're making it not this weird niche thing. Exactly. Like now that you're stepping out and, you know, some of these videos, I think when you... Um, the one where you kind of explain what it was has like 600,000 views. Yeah, but and that's because I like, fill, I just get it out. I'm yeah. like showing people, because I've been making videos about it and people are like, I still don't understand what it is. Right. They're like, what exactly is it? So I was like, okay, yeah, here is mine. Yeah. This is what it but, looks like. And that is so amazing because yeah. I'm sure at that moment you allowed other people who go through the same thing to just have a bump of confidence and also like that awareness that yeah. every, now like more people and then know if people are it, asking them they can direct not, them to a video to go yeah hey, exactly you know. and so i think that is just super rad yeah i've had a lot of health professionals uh mm. get in touch saying that their videos are super useful to understand things from the patient's perspective but then also they uh recommend my videos to their patients wow Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Someone tweeted me the other day being like, I found you because my doctor told me to watch your videos. Yeah. <gasps> that's so cool. And they're about to have stoma surgery. Wow. And I think, so mine was emergency surgery, but a lot of people who have stoma surgery, it's something that they know they're going to yeah. have to have. Okay. And it's like elective. And so a lot of people leading up to that are super scared, super mm-hmm. nervous. They think, is this going to be like the end of my life? Right. Um, you know, like the end of your leisure life, your sex life, your social life mm-hmm. and things like that. Um. And so, yeah, a lot of um, nurses and doctors have been like, what? it's not the end of things. Go watch Hannah Witt's videos. But, there's, but the thing that helped me as well was there was already this community online mm-hmm. of people making videos about stomas and blogs and, and everything. And that helped me, especially mm-hmm. seeing women my age mm-hmm. and, and them being like, oh, I've had my stoma for eight years and like, wow. and, you know, and talking about their day to day life. And I'm like, oh, OK, mm-hmm. she's like me. And she's eight years ahead and look at her blooming and look how normal her life is. I love that so much. And that's really inspiring to me and really helpful as well. Like super helpful, especially like there's been some people who um, would get in touch and be like, I had my stoma surgery three weeks after you. And so then you're kind of like measuring your, obviously everyone is different, Mm -hmm. but you kind of like, you see someone, um, like in their recovery process mm-hmm. and you're like okay cool I can get there yeah. I can I can get so there. how long is the recovery process I mean is it ongoing it depends it's- on like ev- on so many different factors so I had open surgery which means I was like cut open which is has a much longer recovery mm-hmm. than if you have keyhole surgery gotcha. just because of the muscles there and also I was ill for a month lay laying in a bed every day for a month not mm-hmm. eating so i'd lost loads of weight and was super weak like i had to learn to walk again oh my gosh um, well, yeah i saw that video like walking with a cane that yeah, you yeah. put out yes yeah and i walked with a, a stick for yeah, a, a stick. while yeah cane stick it's all good yeah um mine looks kind of like a cane because it's got that like yeah funky yeah, yeah, handle. yeah i love it it's cool um yeah so it's like this whole process mm-hmm. And everyone's recovery is different. But for me, it was like I was five months into recovery when I um, had to have surgery again. Uh, And that was a big knock. But my recovery from that one has been so much faster. Because instead of being ill for a month and not eating for a month, it was just one week that I was in hospital instead of a month. So the the recovery was just so much faster. And I was healthy and I was well when I had that surgery, whereas that one was... That was a lot. I had to have oh. a blood transfusion. Okay. I had two bags of blood. Yeah. What? Oh, also, it was all free because we have healthcare. <laughs> Didn't pay a penny. Wow. <laughs> oh. I just like, anyway, I guess, so we're going to end the podcast there. That in there. <laughs> yeah, are you in crippling debt and can't do anything because of health mm. insurance? No. No, I am not. Okay. Do you know what? I saved money because I wasn't spending any money whilst I was in hospital. There you go. You know, I we have... um like the this bank card, like the Monzo, and it has like this app and it tells you how much you spent each month. And it was like January, 2018, 
zero pounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I guess, okay. Well, honestly, this is something that I've wanted to ask because mm-hmm. the misconception with the NHS and stuff, mm-hmm. with that type of healthcare, um, <laughs> is, <the> <laughs> is the, you know, like, okay, if you have to have emergency surgery, then maybe you can't get it in time or stuff like that. Oh, if Was it's your... an emergency surgery, then you you have the emergency surgery. Okay. Yeah. So oh, it, yeah. it went smoothly. I had it on a Sunday. Okay. Yeah. All right. It was like, she needs a surgery. She's having a surgery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So healthcare, am I yeah, right? Yeah, the waiting lists are, are for things like routine appointments. Okay. And then the mental health stuff is really bad. Like the really? waiting list for mental health is really bad. Gotcha, yeah, yeah, yeah. gotcha. So nothing is perfect but, but you know what would make it better me. put more money into it yeah and then it gets better yeah there you go <laughs> there you go this is my and agenda <laughs> we would have to pay more freelance taxes so but it would help people yeah you would <laughs> it would help people <laughs> exactly Seriously. uh well thank goodness you are here uh-huh. and you're at buffer festival and what did you show Oh, so I screened um, a roundtable video about oh, disability right. and sex and relationships. And Are you the, posting that on YouTube? I am, the full hour. So I screened 10 Ooh. minutes at Buffer. And it's a full hour when conversation. When is that going to be out? Tomorrow. <gasps> so Guys, so by, by the, the time, time this, this is, is out, up. it will be out. Yeah. Okay, well, that is linked. Um, in the last, last few minutes, I want to talk about um, your book, Doing It. Yes. What are, what are some like takeaways from that book or maybe like your favorite part that you can kind of oh my tease God. us and because I can't it have, feels like it's been so long yeah but <laughs> it's just you know, yeah hitting the shelves in the U.S. and I feel mm-hmm. like I can't be like Hannah Witten has a book called doing it and not give him a little bit of something a little bit you know so one of my favorite things about this book is that I got to bring on people to write things that have experiences or expertise that I don't have. So there's a lot of LGBT voices in there, Mm -hmm. um, which I was really happy um, about them writing about their experiences. Um, And then the other stuff is that I just, I think that it's, it's super candid. It's got all of the information in there. And there's a lot of personal anecdotes from me as Mm -hmm. well, in terms of just like, here's a, you know, this is the thing that happened to me, lessons learned. And then, and ultimately what I want people to get away from that book is like, that they're normal and also that normal is what, what you yeah. know whatever that is what is normal um and i even though it's like you know it's called doing it it's a book about sex or whatever the first chapter is about healthy relationships hmm. and that just underpins then everything throughout the book it's just yeah. like about communication whether that's a long-term partner whether it's a casual partner like it all comes down to like communication trust and consent mm-hmm. um the other thing about the american book is that the consent bit is all US law <laughs> instead of UK. So it'll be specific to your yeah. your needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. What's yeah, yeah. what's an example of <laughs> I mean, you can get as deep as you want. <laughs> but like either a toxic relationship mm. or a good relationship where you had one of these revelations and what were they? So I feel very fortunate that I haven't been in like a toxic relationship. I think I've been in like unhealthy situationships, Mm. but I never felt trapped in them because we weren't together, but they were just like things that just like made me super unhappy. Mm. And in those situations, it was definitely like putting the other person on a pedestal, Mm. not actually really seeing them as human and being really infatuated by them. And then Mm. this like, hot and cold um, right. relationship of just like giving you lots of attention mm-hmm. and then just like, and then backing off and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, what is happening? And it's it's horrendous. Right. Um, Especially when that expectation doesn't meet the reality, which is like, oh, yeah, which is dangerous. And the, and the expectations versus reality thing like always mm-hmm. is interesting to me because everyone goes into a relationship with their own expectations of like things that they want but also things that they've seen in the media of like this is how a relationship works and this mm-hmm. is how you're supposed to um how to relationship you know and the other person's coming in with exactly the same like mm-hmm. baggage of expectations and the only way you're gonna like figure that out is if you communicate yeah and be like this is what i want out of a relationship and this is what i want and um one of my favorite things is like meta communication. So 
it's like you need to communicate with your partner about how you communicate mm. yeah well it kind of goes back to the love language stuff too yes exactly which is love so because i'm a very physical person so if like ah. john doesn't go to hold my hand or something i feel like something is like do you still like love why aren't you touching me? Yes. exactly yeah yeah um, i'm physical touch and words of affirmation yeah i have to i constantly like ask questions be like tell me how great i am <laughs> <laughs> what do, do you look? like what do you what like you? about me yeah you know exactly. <laughs> and i just need that exactly constantly. well and yeah i think it's that's a good point too is communicating about communicating yeah. and i think now john knows when i'm like <laughs> It's funny, but like I know the vibes to put out for him to ask me what's wrong, <laughs> you know, yeah. and because like sometimes it is hard to just like express what you're feeling. But I think, you know, there's certain things in place where we both know to ask what's wrong, what's on your mind, you know, yeah. and getting to that point, I think, is the hardest thing. Yeah. Um, when me and my partner first started dating, we did this like it was like this stupid kind of like experiment thing. But then it actually turned out to like be the best thing ever which was like we were joking around and because like if, if a relationship i kind of like see like a business partnership mm -hmm. um especially if you live together you yeah. you're like run you're managing a relationship you're running a business together um and so when we first started dating we had like fake job interviews with each other and we were applying for the position of the other person's partner. So was one person the interviewee and the yeah, other the interviewer? We would like swap back and forth depending okay. on, like in each conversation, but it would be things like, what do you think you can bring to this role? And what wow. are your expectations? What do you like, what do you want to get out of it? Yeah. Um, what, what is your previous experience? Mm. Um, where do you see yourself in five years? And um, like, just things like that, like what are you, you know, what are your strengths and weaknesses? And by having these conversations, mm -hmm. and also like the tone was very funny, it was very light, we were taking the piss, but because we could have those like really important conversations, in but a sh candid way, yeah, fun. but sh but shrouded yeah, yeah. in this like, well, what I can bring to the role is yeah. great hugs, and <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like you could, <laughs> right. just, you could just be a bit silly with it, but by us doing that, especially in the early stages of our relationship, we kind out. of sussed out really quickly mm -hmm. that we were on the same page, yeah. that we were like ready for the, ki the, the type of serious relationship mm -hmm. that we were in. Um, and we totally knew where the other person was coming from. Like, you know, like, how they communicate mm -hmm. and and yeah it was stu yeah. super fun that's was, amazing yeah. so what are fun exercises you can do on the first second and third date I to know. figure out if that's the right one there you go just, there you go just sit them down and just be like and interrogate them. yeah just interview them <laughs> <laughs> i love that <laughs> do you have any advice as we wrap things up for the people out there who want to create or want to live their best creative life um or you could go just the complete opposite <laughs> side in any relationship advice, oh. creator or relationship advice, whatever is on your heart right now, Hannah. Where do you think about? I'm gonna go both. So this is do about it. your relationship with yourself. Boom. So one of the things that you need to know if you want a creative job, if it's like freelance, if um, you you know, there's there's not like a clear path for you to to go down, and it's kind of like about figuring it out for yourself. You need to know yourself well, mm. you, or you need to you know, be in that process of getting to know yourself to figure out how best you work. What time of day do you work best? Do you thrive working by yourself or with other people? Mm. Um, and, and figuring that out mm. and then like optimizing the shit out of yeah. that. No, knowing when you know, you're gonna be the most productive, knowing you know what sparks your ideas and putting yourself in those situations as much as possible i love that yeah self-awareness self-awareness it's huge okay guys make sure to check out hannah down in the show notes below wherever you're listening or watching this sound not soundcloud i never the put other my places stuff. the <laughs> other places hannah thank you so much for being on thanks for having me